Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Shaka Hislop. We'll start today's show with the news that broke today that shocked the world of football. Nobody saw it coming. There was no indication <laughs> this was going to happen. Mauricio Pochettino is the new coach uh, to Chelsea. Goodness me, it's dragged on and on, hasn't it? But in the end, uh, the deal was done. Just a reminder, this is a man who started his career in La Liga, coaching Espanyol, then to Southampton, to Spurs, where he led them to the Champions League final and then a season at PSG as well. Uh, this is what the Chelsea owners had to say about the appointment. The sporting team conducted a diligent and thoughtful process that the board is proud of. We are delighted that Maurizio will be joining Chelsea. Maurizio is a world-class coach with an outstanding track record. We are all looking forward to having him on board. Uh, let's welcome more of this, shall we? Jan Agafjortov joins us, as does former Chelsea defender Mario Malkiot. Mario, let's start with you. Are you happy? Um, I'm happy that at least something is going to happen. So I hope that something is <laughs> going to happen. Because, oh my God, man. I, I, you know, like, look, uh, when things like this happen, I don't want to jump to to, um, to high yet. Because I think it's a big change that he's going to have to fight against. Um, everybody said that. You know what the funny part was of this whole story? is what Frank Lampard said himself. He smiled about it and he said, the problem is not going to be mine anymore because it's going to be the next manager. So what I hope that Patricino can bring his identity to the club because at this moment, Chelsea has no identity in playing football. Yeah, and in theory, a new coach comes in and obviously he looks at the players he wants to keep and the ones he wants to transfer and then looks at the players that he wants to bring in from other clubs. But there are so many players at this club. He is in big trouble already, isn't he? Well, first of all, we have to congratulate Chelsea Football Club with a great signing. I mean, that is a long time since we could do that. That is point number <laughs> one. Pochettino, Pochettino is a good coach for them in terms of that he's a club, club builder. And I think now, Dan, before we start talking about players and what he has said with identity and everything, they've got a lot of players there, but they've got also a lot of potential in that club. We saw at Aston Villa, we'll use that as an example. We've talked a lot about what Emery has done for Aston Villa. I think that Pochettino can in short term get a, a team out of these boys because there are so many great boys in there. The problem is they paid so much for them that people think mm. they are world class and they are not. So, But Pochettino has shown before that he can put together a good team. But now, as been said, they have to develop a team and then the trophies and all the ambition of winning trophy, that will be a consequence of that. Chelsea need to be Chelsea Football Club again. It can't... It, just be a bunch of overpaid, too high profiles, too high transfer kind of guys running around at uh, Stamford Bridge. What's his priority got, be, Shane? Um, Day one. Getting a squad that, that he's happy to work with. And, and, and listen, I, I feel almost obligated to be very positive about Pochettino's, Pochettino's uh, appointment. I'm going to join Jan in that because our former Chelsea player could, could only muster, well, at least we do, we've done something <laughs> as, 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 the, as the only positive to take from this. So I, I feel as though, listen, I, I think Mauricio Pochettino has shown how good a manager he is, particularly in, in English football. He, he's a club in that, and he showed that with Spurs. He's taking over a Chelsea team that, certainly in terms of league table and in position and what was needed, not too dissimilar from Chelsea right now. The difference with, with Chelsea and, and, well, this Chelsea and, and any other team I, I certainly can think of in, in, in world football is the size of the squad mm. and, and how you trim that. And while you have players like Mason Mount with just a year left on his contract, Kovacic, similarly, um, you, you have players with seven and a half, with seven and eight years left. And if you're Mauricio Pochettino, it's about finding that balancing act. It's about trimming the squad but doing so in a way that brings in some money because financial fair play will come into, will, will come into the offering at some point, sooner or later. Um, and, and figuring out exactly who's his best 11. Where do you start in, in building for the future? And that's when, when your squad is this big, that's not easy. Mm. How, you know, again, you have players like Mount who you figure would, would, would any manager would be happy to at least work with. But he seems to be set on having his uh, playing his, his football elsewhere. You have Romelu Lukaku, who's on loan at Inter Milan, and he's saying that, or suggestions are that he's happy to move on. Um, and then, and then, what? Thirty others in, in West London that you you're still not sure 
whether they fit your style, what their positions are, both in the short and, and, and the long term. And all you have to do all this in, in what, four weeks, six weeks, in, in preparation for, for a, a, a new season where you have to qualify. For, you, I don't see how Chelsea fail to qualify for the Champions League two seasons running, given some of their expenditure. Uh, we've seen some feisty encounters, haven't we, when Poch was in charge of Spurs when they were taking on Chelsea, Battle of the Bridge, uh, etc. Mario, how much does that kind of cast a shadow slightly on the appointment? Of course, it's going to be a sensitive moment. I think for the people that uh, people that support, of course, Chelsea, um, I hope they know, but the ones that don't, there's a big rivalry between the two teams. And that's why him coming to Chelsea, it's going to be a sensitive um, atmosphere, especially in the beginning. Uh, and I think, look, he has enough experience, so I don't see him having any problems with that because I think, you know, as a coach, like the guys already mentioned, I've seen him work. I've seen him, you know, his teams, how he builds his teams and what he did with Spurs when he was manager of them. But the only thing is that it's very difficult to get the team running straight away. Why? Because... Yeah, I hope he's going to be focusing a lot. And I already heard that he was already watching a lot of the games before he's going to take the job anyway. So while the games were still going on, of course, this weekend was the last one. But then further down the line, it's also going to be very, very important for him to quickly get the fans behind him because it can be very sensitive. When you play in a Chelsea stadium and you don't perform like you have to, then they can really turn on you quickly. And when that goes against you, you saw what they tried to do when they brought in Lampard because you could see what happened to Potter because he couldn't turn the tables anymore. Yeah, and have they got any money to spend in the summer? <laughs> Good question. Uh, well, they have to sell someone. They were talking about financial fair play. I think that is a part of it. There's, there, I think that don't underestimate Pochettino. He has also done a due diligence on Chelsea. He knows where he has to play with. He has the players he has available. I, I guess the discussion, maybe that has been a bit delayed, is that who's going out, who's coming in. But Bowley and the rest of the venture uh, bodies, uh, they have kind of pick them out as you do before you go to a movie. You get some candies in. There has been no plan. You don't understand that. But maybe with Pochettino, he will have his core of players that he will want, want to use. The problem is with Chelsea Football Club is when we see the, the position on the table. First of all, it's a fantastic time for Pochettino to come in because he can only get better. It's not mm. possible that Chelsea can be worse. I mean, that is not possible. And point number two, there is only one way to win over the crowd. That is to win football games. That is the only thing you can do. If you see Chelsea this season, they've had three different coaches and they're all different. You have Tuchel, who was a tough uh, German coach that is, was uh, kind of brutal in his way of demand things. Then you have Potter who tried this school teacher kind of project that he did in Brighton and then you're ending up with, with Frank Lampard and to be fair to Frank Lampard as I loved him as a player, as I love him as a person. I mean what is done at Chelsea this nine games? It can't be worse either. It's not possible. Dan, you could have been there. You would have done exactly the same as Frank. Maybe better. So it's not possible. Oh. So it's the best timing ever for Pochettino to come in. He will wish. He can go in church and pray. The timing is perfect. So, having said that, Mario, what is a successful season next year for Chelsea under Pochettino? Yeah, I went Better to Chelsea 12th. when... <laughs> no, but I... Yeah, Love definitely. Me. I mean, I can give you that answer. But I went to Chelsea when they weren't in the Champions League. And I think I went to around the world, you understand, to the clubs that, um, the, that I played at before. I went to Ajax, I went to Chelsea. So clubs are always focused on trying to uh, implement their uh, building on two words, more success, on being part of the elite. Okay, the only part to be of the elite, you either have to win the league or be part of the Champions League. So the only aim for him right now, look, people will say, yeah, he's got to go and win the league and then we got to win. No, I don't know. That's not what I'm... For <laughs> me, the aim should be for him, try to get your team towards the Champions League. That is what you understand. It's a big task to ask, but it's also because his skill, his understanding and his preparation, and I expect him to do all those parts and bring all those parts to the table. And then I think we, we should focus on trying to get in the Champions League because that is the, the, 
the, the biggest aim for him, and I know you understand that um, people will might say like, hey, guys, it's very difficult, but I don't think it's difficult. That's what he should but be it, aiming for. But, it's, but if I say that, if I may say that, it's quite interesting. Now, in every other venture or business project, you have to have a process. There is no way that we can expect Pochettino take a middle of the road Chelsea. I think it was 12th now in the league. And they should, if, if you saw the form they have in the last third of the season, they could be relegated. Is no chance. Yes, we can say Chelsea always got to be in the Champions League. Chelsea always get an aim for the, Chelsea, uh, for, for the Champions League. But the me- most important thing for Pochettino now is to make a football team. Is to make, like Mario was saying about the identity, develop the players, turn them into great football players and not only great on the sheet of paper where a transfer fee is. And then the result of that, or the consequences of that, is the results. I think that every, every Chelsea fan, I said on Twitter, yeah, we, he has to create a team. No, we have to go to the Champions League. No, that's not how it works. We can do it in a populistic way, but to, to, to sit here now, the 29th of May, and expect Chelsea to be in Champions League because Pochettino come in, dream on. What do you do about Lukaku, Mario? Lukaku is like, look, Chelsea has to look for a striker. That is not a secret. I mean, like, what is it, a month ago I was there. Uh, I was in England, what is it, a couple of days ago. So, you understand, I, I, I felt the atmosphere. I hear how people think about it. When you look at it, Lukaku, it's either two things. Look, he's going to the final of the Champions League, so that's one. You understand, he's either, that this is something that every individual wants to win. So, I get that. Okay, he's there. If he wins it, he comes back. Pochettino wants to talk to him. He wants to talk to him. There's only one reason why he wants to talk to him. I need a striker. Are you willing to do the extra parts for me that I'm looking for? And if it doesn't have a fit, then we might have to part ways. And that is going to be the best conversation for both teams. I think for Lukaku to to tell him his aspirations and where he wants to be. And for Portichino, he's coming to a new club and he needs a striker. He comes from a team where, let's say, if we highlight England, where he had Harry Kane that scored so many goals for him. He had that great combination that he built because Son and and, and, uh, Kane started with him. But away from that, he needs a good striker because Chelsea has no striker. How can you be a team? And then it's also what Dan said. It's like, how can you be a team and don't have a striker in your team that at least can back you 20 goals as a normality? Mm. And that is what Lukaku has to aim for. If he can deliver that, I don't see any problem, but they need a striker. That's guaranteed. The thing for me, I, I, find, I think that Lukaku finds himself in, in a position not too dissimilar from Mauricio Pochettino, in, in all honesty. Jan, Jan made the point um, that football games is the only thing that matters, is the only thing that truly wins over a fan base. Um, and, and listen, and Mario can speak to the depth of... of uh, of feelings between Chelsea and their fans, more to the point, and, and Spurs and or former Spurs managers, and in this case, um, but Pochettino comes in with a much shorter honeymoon period than any other manager, given his links with, with, with Spurs. And again, to Jan's point, the only thing that that wins that over is results. Mm-hmm. I think the same for Romelu Lukaku, given how quickly things unraveled um, last season with, Pochett- with, with, with Tuchel and the interview that he did, and, um, which o- obviously saw him, saw him go, off, go off to Inter Milan. Similarly, and as Mario is saying, Chelsea needs a striker. They have a very good one in Romelu Lukaku, who's going to the Champions League final. But I, I don't think fans forget that quickly. But yeah. again, <laughs> games matter. Mm. Lukaku scores 10 goals in the first 10 games. Yep. And all of a sudden, that interview is long forgotten. Yep. Lukaku positions it differently. This was about me and this was about me and Tuchel, not necessarily about the football club. And every everything is, 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 is quickly forgotten. I think so much about Chelsea's season hinges on, on the start. But that that's they a get. big gamble, putting all your eggs in your Lukaku basket. That, that's, a, that's a very big gamble. But to, to your point, I'm not sure how much Chelsea has left to gamble with. Given, and, and again, I, 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 fi- yes, financial fair play comes, comes, in, comes into play here. And I, as I said before, Chelsea simply cannot afford to miss out financially on, on top four, two seasons running. 
Exactly. But you say that, and then you see what Manchester City are doing and how they've been able to avoid, um, well, so far anyway, any stipulations. You see what PSG have done. I, I can't explain either of those. But yet I'm sitting here saying that Chelsea, Chelsea need this to, to avoid um, a, 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 any stipulations themselves. So, um, but given the money that they've spent, can you go out and spend 100, mil 100 million on a hurricane, for argument's sake? And if you do, what does that mean for the rest of the squad? How quickly you can get rid of them? And as we've, we've spoken about before, everybody knows Chelsea needs to sell, so they're not going to come in with top dollar for, <laughs> yeah. for the players when they are interested. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a really difficult balancing financial act for Todd Bowley and, and Chelsea Football Club. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.